Hi guys and welcome along. I've got another simple citrus watercolour project for you today and this time it's oranges. If you haven't already seen our lemon tutorial, go back and have a look at that and then you can put them together in a lovely garland once you finish this one. Anyway, get your paints and let's get started. Today we're doing the orange which bears a very close resemblance in style of painting to the lemon I did last time. So if you haven't already had a look at that one, I highly recommend doing that because then you'll have both together and you'll be able to start creating some really lovely orange and lemons uh, garlands and bits and pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a vague pencil guide. I think today we might do two oranges and also the other difference is I'm gonna show you how to paint one which has a leaf sort of coming over the top of it as well. So it's just some sort of rough squashed circles is what you want and then you always have a branch or a stalk coming down and dropping off onto said fruit and then the leaves will be coming off as they will. So yeah I'm gonna have one that comes on over the fruit itself is a bit of an interesting challenge and we'll have some little blossom flowers as well. The lemon was a really nice uh, sort of starter I suppose, a nice introduction and now we're going to just give ourselves a slightly bigger challenge with the orange. So speaking of which we've got some cadmium orange here which I'm just waking up. You also find a lot of other colours in an orange so we're going to get the this is um, Windsor Red, I've got Cadmium Red also next to it and I've got Cadmium Yellow nicely woken up as well. Now the other challenge is because we've got a leaf coming over the top, I'm going to start off by doing a very sort of light wash of the orange to just start off with getting the shape. But what we really don't want to do is to go too dark and strong, especially on this bit here. So to start off make sure you are using your brush strokes in the general direction of the roundness of the shape. So you can see I'm curving the brush round and then I'm going to just dab off the wetness and colour and do the edges first so I'll do a little bit down here because I know that's not going to be covered by a leaf. And then, and I'm blotting my brush off as well because there's a lot of water on here already. I can draw in the colour, but then also the orange has a dappled surface. So for this last unpainted bit, I'm just going to dapple the brush, also knowing that some of that is going to be covered over by the leaf. So I'm just going to repeat that process with the orange here. Using a nice large brush, size 6. Clean it off, dab it off, draw it in, dab it off and then Give yourself a section of more sort of dappled, unpainted orange. And that is a great start for our oranges. Now we can start to think about our leaves coming down over the top. So I've got some sap green, some green gold here mixed up as well. And that are going to form the basis of our stalk. Now, of course, these still are two, these two oranges are still a bit wet, so we've just got to be careful when we're coming down. But I'm still using this large brush I've got because what I rather like about it is you can get real character and sort of nobble with it. That's my technical term, is nobble. Just leaving a little bit of space, blotting my brush off and then just going back in and making sure we've got a lovely smooth blend. And 
then carrying on down. And now as the stalk gets a little slimmer, I'm gonna get in my size two brush. And each time the orange sort of finds a new junction, I'm just doing a little bit of a sort of unpainted space, a bit of a knobble on it. And I will just drop in a tiny bit of sap green just to give it a little bit more interest. Now the next one coming down is the leaf that's gonna go over the orange. Now, when you are trying to check whether something is dry or not, Either you can hold it up to the light and you'll see by tilting your page into the light what bits of water capture the light and what bits don't. Just remembered I want to add a tiny bit of, tiny bit of blue into that leaf. Um, and the other thing is just if you think it's dry you can just do a light finger test by rubbing your finger over. That's pretty good so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk it. I'm going to go in. So we're going to bring our stalk down so it's sort of joined up from there and then it's sort of it's curled up and over a little bit and now I'm going to get my larger brush and my sap green so my leaves are just sap green lovely clean that brush off and blot it off a little bit as well and the green leaf went over fairly easily onto that light orange wash because we'd only done a tiny bit and that's looking really nice. We'll leave that for the moment and keep moving down. So you can see again that I'm just using this sort of unpainted um, little sections to my advantage, just creating lovely sort of bits of light and shade. We'll come back to sort of getting that stalk looking really nice and interesting. We'll have a little flower coming off here. A little bit more of a stem and then we will get the last leaf in there. Let's have a little look at this. Just want to smooth that edge a little bit and get a little bit of blue in there and there. And we're just going to allow those leaves to dry whilst we have a little look at our blossoms. So, an orange blossom, we're going to use our technique of creating a very, very pale wash to create these petals. Now, I've left this stem unpainted just so if my petals do go over which I'm pretty sure they're going to then it knows which bit I don't have to paint when it comes to it later when I'm filling in that stem. Now this is a very sort of simple citrus blossom so I'm not even using uh, any kind of pencil guide but of course if you want to please do feel free it's very sensible too okay this is a perfect time to allow things to dry and then we can come back and start adding in some detail now this is dry we can start to work on the oranges a bit more. So I'm going to get some much sort of more bold and bright cadmium orange. And again, I'm just starting to work my way around the edges 
and I can also start to sort of create the shape that I want. And I am going to just add in a small amount of the Windsor Red as well. And it's funny because you sort of think, oh no, that doesn't need that, but it really does start to come into its own. So a bit of orange starting to fill out the, the actual shape you want. Draw that in. And just sort of dabble the brush and a little bit Windows of red. And you want to make sure that you work sort of fairly swiftly with this because what you don't want is for the orange to sort of dry up and create a, a solid line. And I'm still thinking about that bit of particularly light shine on the orange. So whenever I'm cleaning off my brush, I'm also just dabbing it on and blotting it on the kitchen roll to make sure that I haven't got too much excess water coming in. about oranges is they're not perfect circles so you can sort of create your your shapes without worrying about them being too perfect in fact a little bit of a wonk and a wobble I think is a great thing and as you can see I'm just dabbling the brush to make sure the texture keeps building. And then I keep going back in. Um, it's this funny thing with an orange, it just feels like you could just keep on adding more and more texture because it's got such an amazing dappled skin. And each time you do, it just means the roundness is becoming even more pronounced. 
starting to be quite happy with that, but I think I just want to build it up from the bottom a bit more. That's it, really draw up that colour. So they're a bit more involved than the lemons. Lovely. There'll be a bit more to do on those later, but we're gonna just go over to the leaves for a moment. So here I've got a bit of sap green mixed with French ultramarine. And what I want to do is to create just a simple bit of leaf detail, nothing too much. So that is just following the central line and giving a few little lines, but nothing nothing too strong and then I like to just sort of blend it a little bit this is also a really useful shadowy color for a little bit of shadow on the stalks which is also going to help us when we start to just build up the uh, the stalk that comes down onto the orange. I can also see now that I can add in my little green stalk because I know how much petal is showing. So now we are going to get a much thinner brush. I've got my three tenths here and I am going to start with a very little bit of green gold that's just looks like it's sort of poking in between the petals. These are just showing the tiny little sepals and then this flower we're only seeing the underside of it so we're going to see more of this green gold. spread out and then we're going to take some cadmium yellow and on this one we can only just see a little bit of the filaments because the flower is facing away from us on this one we can see quite a bit more so I'm just painting a few sort of fine lines and then with the green gold I'm just going to add a few little anthers which are the little dots on the end and I'm, I'm doing a few more dots than than filaments that I've painted to give that sense of there being lots there. Right, time to go back to our oranges. So this time I'm going to do a little bit of shadow on the orange itself and so I've picked up a bit of the uh, shadowy green and blue mix and this is quite a sort of daring bit to do so you want to go really really gently with it. So I've picked up a little bit on the brush, dabbing a bit along the underside and then using water on the brush to just disperse it a little bit, make it a little less 
extreme. So I'm going to do some on the bottom there. And then I'm also going to do a little bit just coming out from underneath this leaf. It's really important that you still get the sort of dapple colour going on the um, so it's not just one big blob of shadow because of course an orange is a textured thing and I'm going to have a little bit of shadow at the top again for this one because it is underneath this branch. a little bit down the side. And then a wet brush, just dispersing that colour, making sure you're keeping unpainted little bits in there. And a little bit along the bottom. to sort of, I don't know, do any last sort of bits of shaping. I just like to do that with the orange. Nice one. Oh, really nice. Okay, and then the last little bits are the details that we're going to do. This, um, Sap green, French ultramarine blue mix is fantastic. And I'm going to paint a little, sort of almost like a little star shape, a squashed star shape around the base of that stem. detail in the centre of the leaves. use that bit of shadow to help just define any more bits on the stem that need a bit of help. And there you have a simple citrus orange. Thanks so much for watching. Another fruit project that I absolutely adore doing. I think they're just such satisfying little things to create and you get really good results really quickly. Um, I want to say a real big thank you for watching and a, and a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. Your support really enables me to create these videos and if you enjoyed this video then hit the like button and of course comment below if you'd like to let me know how you got on if you were painting along and you can subscribe by hitting subscribe and you'll never miss another video. Alright, bye!